Hello, I'm John Humbler from the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. We're at that time of year when all the kids are going back to school and all the things that that involves. Um, I'm joined today by Joe Doyle, who's a child and adolescent psychotherapist. And Joe's been working with kids for quite some time, post the earthquake and before, um, as they deal with, with um, the sorts of stresses that, that happen as a result of things like this. Joe, thanks for joining me. And um, I'm really interested to know what does a, a child and ad adolescent psychotherapist do? <laughs> Good question. Um, so I work with children and their families yeah. to assess if they have any emotional problems or behavioural problems and see if I can address yeah. those with the families and yes. the children. So I work both with the family system and the individual child. Yes. And you know, just about half an hour ago we had another earthquake. It was yeah. centred at St Arnold, and, uh, but we felt it here in Christchurch. What does something like that do for kids who, who came through the earthquake of, uh, or the earthquakes of 2011? Are, they, are people likely to get further upset by that? Some will and some won't. It's another yeah. reminder, isn't it, that we, we live on these shaky aisles. Yes. And, uh, and certainly it went on for quite a long time, didn't yes. it? It was um, not you know, very strongly felt here, but it was uh, over yeah. a long period of time. And there'll mm. certainly be some children and adults who will be stirred up, and um, yes. those that are suffering post-traumatic stress disorder still yeah. will be having those kind of systems being mm. set off in, in their bodies and their brains again. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, you were working with kids before the earthquakes and you've been working with kids since, has there been quite a change in, the, in the, the sorts of things you're dealing with with kids? Yeah, there's significant change since the earthquake. So initially I saw children for a long time in the hospital in the mental health um, outpatient unit mm -hmm. and they were, I would obviously see lots of anxious kids mm -hmm. but since the earthquake, particularly in the first kind of 18 months, there will be lots more children who are really worried about the wind and storms and a lot of natural yeah. disasters, tsunamis and obviously the earthquakes as well yes. and having sleep disturbances but that was a really significant change that because of the noise of the earthquakes I think yeah. then when they heard wind they would get a mm. lot of generalised anxiety about. And, and what, what, is the, what can people normally do to, to deal with those anxieties? Well uh, being close to mum and dad is always good yeah. you know. Um, mm. Uh, children are part of a system, or a family system, and so how mum and dad are coping mm. really impacts on how the child copes. Right. And so children just, you know, y you lead them through modelling how, how yeah. you would cope. And of course, if you're stressed and worried, then, then they feel that, and that's natural and normal. Mm. But then you can show your child how to cope with that stress yeah. and do deep breathing and calm down. And mm. Of course, of a lot of the stress that people have been dealing with since the earthquakes is not so much the stress of the earthquake itself. It's mm. all the things like insurance and rebuild and yep. upsets to commuting patterns and jobs and whatnot. Yep. Um, is it those things that can impact? So that's really huge now. So mm. the first part of after the earthquakes, maybe the first 18 months, it was more the post-traumatic stress, you know, yeah. the nightmares and the fears of the mm. wind and the shaking and stuff. But now the children are presenting with generalised anxiety disorders mm. and you know they might have sore tummies or lots of headaches or not wanting to go to school. Um, <clears throat> and when you talk to the families, you know, then what unfolds is like years of stress regarding mm. insurance claims, yes. still living in damaged houses. You know, people in Christchurch um, are very hard working and many of the families that I see had just finished renovating a house or just mm. um, finished building their house and then suddenly it's red zoned and they have to start again and so there's all those mm. stresses of kind of building yes. back up and often families, you know, in Christchurch particularly, like spending lots of time with their children and, and want to give their kids, mm. you know, a good life and that has changed the landscape for them and yeah. now they're trying to um, get new jobs and um, start their businesses up from scratch mm. again and, and do all the moving and so children now um, are either being impacted by adjusting so having to mm. adjust to a new house and a new school and then again you know some of the kids yeah. that I've seen have moved four times yes. three different schools um, or mum and dad are really stressed and of course mm. when mum and dad are really stressed then the whole family is on tentacles. Yeah so mum and dad can play a big part in de-stressing kids. 
Yeah, and I think just being aware of how your stress mm. might impact on your children is really yeah. important. Now, the, the earthquakes were almost five years ago now, or certainly five years ago in the case of the September quake. Mm. So five-year-olds now were, um, it won't be in their memory. No. So, so, so when you're dealing with kids in sort of that um, five to eight age group and then eight to 15 or whatever, mm. are there different sorts of... Yeah, reactions. there's significantly different um, reactions depending on what developmental stage the child was at. Yeah. So, you know, I see children who were six months yeah. when the earthquake happened. And depending on what was happening in the family life, you know, mm. that can, maybe they were slightly more susceptible to anxiety and now yeah. they're like super anxious and having a great mm. deal of difficulty separating from their mums and starting mm. school and that sort of thing. So older kids, um, I know the uh, counsellors from the schools, the high schools, so those kids who were uh, 13 or in third form or year nine mm. um, at the earthquake have just left school. Mm. So, right. and those school counsellors tell me that there's huge amounts of anxiety compared mm. to before the earthquake yeah. for all those. Um, so apart from, you know, one of the things that people are having a lot of anxiety is to come and see somebody like you, but if somebody's watching this mm. at home now, um, what is it that they can do in a home situation to try to deal with, well, first of all, you know, how would they recognise symptoms? And secondly, what might they be able to do to self-help? So the most important thing is about the relationship with your child. Mm. So you really need to stay in contact with with your kid, you know, and it, go and talk to them. If you're concerned about them, talk to them. And I don't mean kind of like suddenly burst into their bedroom mm. and, you know, say, off the tablet, we're having a chat. <laughs> right. You know, just when yeah. you're bike riding or walking, just remember to have those kind of conversations with them about how are you, you know, mm. is there anything on your mind? Just try and make it really mm. casual and relaxed. There's another earthquake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this right. building and trucks. Yeah. Um, so that's the first step really, you know, yeah. before you race off to a counsellor or, or yeah. get really anxious, just try and keep in contact with your child mm. and find out, you know, what's going on in their life. Well, what you're saying is uh, when out walking or cycling, so the first thing to do is to be out walking or cycling. With them, yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, too often it's really easy when you've got lots of stress and you're dealing with insurance mm. claims and new businesses, et cetera, et cetera, mm. to go, OK, I don't have time to actually right. do that. But that's hugely important for your kid. And that's, you know, part of the system mm. of being in a family is each part of that system affects mm. each other part. And yeah. so if you can spend a bit of just casual time with your mm. child instead of like worrying about all the things you've got to do that would really help. Yeah, that's good. And when you think about you know, major events like this internationally, you must have read about what happens and on a, what happens next. <laughs> wow, who's have you got the crystal ball? Yeah. But is it the normal pattern that anxieties will gradually um, mm. reduce over time? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, we're not quite sure. I mean, when we first started doing mm. the earthquake counselling, um, before we knew too much about the impacts and, and also how long the shakes would go on mm. for, um, you know, we were given a six-month contract to do the right. counselling. We need it longer. Oh, <laughs> we definitely need yeah. it longer. Yeah. And then, of course, research started coming out, you know, and then it's three years and then it's five years. And now, mm. you know, with the rebuild and the um, roadworks and changing the schools and all that sort of mm. stuff. It's an ongoing daily reminders about what's how Christchurch has changed yes. significantly. I, I, I sense um, an increasing level of optimism um, mm. and sort of anticipation about the future. Is that flowing through to, to the people you deal with, with children? I think that um, Christchurch people are very adaptive. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, you hear the word resilient around mm. the place, but I, I think generally humans are very adaptive mm. and we make the most of, you know, situations yeah. and we look to the future and stuff mm. like that. There's certainly some people, there's a huge blip in terms of mental health services needed in Christchurch. And so there are some people who are still really, really stuck in, mm. in it and are still struggling to see that yeah. light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. But yeah. Now, well, it's tremendous to know the, the people like you doing the things that you do and there'll be people watching this today who'll be um, thinking a lot about their own circumstance and this discussion ho hopefully will help. 
It's um, uh, been almost five years since the big February quake. Um, we are making a lot of progress and we've still got a long way to go. I think, as you've said, Joe, there are some people who are still pretty stuck and we, we must absolutely remember those people and uh, uh, make sure we're working with everybody to get to that next stage. So thank you very much yeah, indeed. That's my good. Pleasure. And um, there's an interview with Joe and the Future Christchurch update um, together with a whole lot of other articles and that will be in your uh, mailbox very soon. Thank you for joining us.